Hello and welcome to the 2019 RSX Youth World Championship in St. Petersburg, Russia. This event was hosted by the St. Petersburg Regional Sports and Non-Government Organization Yacht Club of St. Petersburg. While the opening ceremony took place at the iconic Park of the 300th Anniversary of St. Petersburg. Hello, we are in St. Petersburg in Russia and we are hosting a Youth World Championship in RSX class. Uh, it's a great honor for St. Petersburg to have this event here. It's the uh, first time in the history of this city. Here we have 104 participants from all over the world. We have 19 countries and we are very happy about this result. The 103 competitors from 21 different nations were ready to race at the RSX Youth World Championships. With racing taking place in one of the world's most iconic cities, the event was highly unique to all those taking part in what was the first major RSX event hosted in Russia. Amongst the entry list are a number of champions, and these RSX Youth World Championships will offer tough competition for those taking part. The defending title holders will be pushed hard, with new faces looking to make their mark. In the girls' fleet, Yana Reznikova, representing the host nation of Russia, will be looking to go one step further after receiving the silver medal at last month's Hempel Youth Sailing World Championships in Poland. In the boys' fleet, it is Fabian Pianazza of France who has been the sailor to beat all season, having won gold at the RSX Youth Europeans and the 2019 Hempel Youth Sailing World Championships. Pianazza is also the reigning Youth World Champion, having displayed pure dominance over the past 12 months. Uh, this year it's very difficult to defend my title because uh, there is a lot of raider with a um, strong level. The condition is very difficult, so I will do my best to, to win the title. Amongst the challenges for the 2019 RSX Youth World Championships will be Team Israel. They have a great squad, both in the girls' and the boys' fleet. Over the past few years, they have dominated the Youth Worlds and European Championships, winning numerous titles. It is one of the most consistent youth squads in the world. with the top five girls in Israel. We have our team, but also we like to practice with all the, the Israel sailors. And for me, it's the best time of the year because we, we come back to, together and train together. And, and it's really fun. Hey, competing with guys from Israel is hard because I know them. I surf with them a lot. I know they're, they're, they're a good surfer and they can pass me. Naim Achi Tovim, Ulam Achat Naim Achi Tovim Bolam, and Amnim, Lorak Mitharim Bayam, and Gam, who's Dream Hadeshini, and Haberim Bayam, and Mitharim Bayam.
More and more talented and ambitious young athletes join the RSX class every day. They love the sport and some have been attracted by their country's RSX role models. Let's meet some of them. Yeah, I'm trying to make my own road, but I'm also looking up to better guys and I don't want to be the same as them, but I'm, I'm taking some things from them. Tarnowski is a big person in our country and I would really like to be someone like him and have results like this person. One of the persons that I admired most would maybe be Kieran Badlow. He's a very great sailor and I aspire to be like him. In Greece we have two top and successful athletes like Nikos Kaklamanakis. Olympic gold medalist and Byron Kokalanis, uh, who is a world champion. And I really admire them and they inspire all the Greek athletes and globally all the athletes. Uh, I want to, to make something like they have done uh, and I hope to make it. Let's find out who the next Youth World Champions are. The first two days of the regatta offered up completely different weather conditions on the waters of the Neva Bay. On the opening day, the northern capital delivered perfect windsurfing conditions and the 104 competitors were greeted with both sun and wind, an ideal combination for windsurfing. A westerly wind of 12 to 15 knots allowed the races to plane and show the impressive speed of the RSX. After the strong and shifting winds on the first day, day two saw a reduced wind of between five to seven knots for the 104 competitors. Versatility is one of the main advantages of the RSX Olympic class. These boards are suitable for both planing modes and also for transitional modes in weak wind. If on the first day of the championship the windsurfers gracefully planed around the course, on the second day they had to demonstrate their skills in pumping with much greater physical exertion. High wind is more like physics, but it's like all muscle. Tactics is important, but not much because you have to decide one part of the uh, of the course or the other part. Because if you tack a lot of times, you are uh, losing meters. When you have medium wind, when you have a railing, is very important to have all the time 
the board keeping velocity, keeping railing or planning. And it's, for me, it's the most uh, basic one because you have to pump a lot. When it's low wind, it's true that you have to pump a lot, but you have less resistance from the sail. So for me, it's easy to pump and you, have, you are not so tired. The R6 board is a design board to, perf to perform uh, very well also in the light wind and strong winds. It's a uh, one design board so it's equal for all the competitors and uh, it's the skills that make the difference to win. During the first two days of racing at the RSX Youth World Championships in Petersburg, Never Bay provided a range of testing conditions, from 20 knots down to 5 knots. We have had uh, wind speeds of zero to three, four knots wind speed and um, I don't want to start any race below five knots. They stayed on the beach, they, uh, they are having volleyball matches and uh, also very good thing is that uh, the judges, they organized uh, rules clinic for them, so whoever is interested about rules, it's a very good opportunity to spend your time wisely. However, on day three, the wind proved to be too fickle and the competitors were forced to enjoy the other shoreside activities instead. There were different types of entertainment available. Beach volleyball, football, chatting with friends, sunbathing, swimming and various challenges that the windsurfers threw down for each other. The Race Village Camp is based near the park of the 300th anniversary of St. Petersburg. The organising committee has arranged a great set of coastal events for the athletes and guests. As well as this, there is a big volunteer team that supports all the events in St. Petersburg. The sailing event volunteers of St. Petersburg Yacht Club. There are about 100 positions for four big international regatta. This championship is about 40 positions. These people, some of them students, where they work in offices, in different jobs. Some of them sportsmen, sailors, or um, part of them just plan to become sailors. Here on this venue, we make job of legion officers. Uh, it's assistant between organizers and the city and participants. Uh, another position is volunteers media, uh, position of administration inside our project and what we call jack of all trades, just do everything to be done.
day was not so good. We had light wind and so many clouds, we didn't go out. But we had an opportunity to meet with other people from other countries that was here to race. And we had a lot of fun playing volleyball, football and just chilling out talking. And we're probably going to have a barbecue party after. When uh, I am, when I have the free time, I I will go with uh, my friend uh, in the city to to see to to have a funny moment uh, uh, after the race uh, and to to stay in a happy place. After the day at the boat park, the athletes got ready for the final series of the regatta. On the penultimate day in the boys' gold fleet, those who balanced their nerves, got the best of the weather and made the right tactical choices were the Israelis. Eyal Yohei Zror took the lead going into the medal race with 23 points, and his compatriots Daniel Bazik Tashtash and Reuven Hillel with 25 points and 27 points respectively. A little further back but still contenders for a medal are Alexandros Kalpoyianakis of Greece and Frenchman Fabian Pianazza. Amongst the girls, the best sailor of the day was Moscow's Reznikova. She had two first place finishes and very quickly moved from the fourth place to second. She was second only to Manon Pianazza of France. Pianazza has been the most consistent racer at these championships, and while she has not won a single race, she has finished in the top three almost every time. With this enviable stability, she is three points ahead of Reznikova. was uh, hard races, we haven't any time to breathe <laughs> and it was very interesting, I'm very happy that I won races, but I don't know what will be tomorrow uh, and I hope it will be a little windy. I think that uh, all teams are strong, but uh, it's different winners uh, every, every championships and uh, who work Harder and uh, more, he or she will. My favorite scar is like a storm to never cease. Exotic thing, the missing piece. You know what you do, no.
With thanks to the skills of the race officers and their teams, on the final day of the championship, a wind of five to six knots allowed for the full schedule of races to be delivered. In the medal race, it was destined that Pianazza and Reznikova would have to keep a close eye on each other. Neither could avoid losing touch of one another to keep their hands on the gold. The rivals went one-on-one -on -one from the very start, but the Russian just pipped the French athlete to top spot. Reznikova won the championship by 26 points. Pianazza was three points behind the Russian racer and took second place. The Israeli Nama Greenberg finished third. It's crazy, I can't believe because it's in my country and my first uh, youth championship in the six. I'm so happy. <laughs> you can. I tried to keep my mind clear before the races uh, here in shore, but uh, this waiting time uh, was hard, and it was hard to keep my thoughts uh, in one <laughs> thing. <laughs> but when I come to the start line, I feel uh, strong. I feel. Uh, uh, I don't know. It was cool. No one's calling on the telephone. So I guess I'll stay right at home. Do the only thing I've ever known to do. So I gotta, gotta, gotta get out. In the men's medal race, there was a similar situation. From the very first mark, the Israelis, Eyal Yohei's Roar and Daniel Basik Tashtash, took the lead and moved closer to each other with each mark. All the way to the finish line, the best friends moved clear of their rivals. In this struggle, Zoror was the victor, finishing first and winning the championship. His teammate, Tashtash, came second in the medal race and in the overall ranking. The fiercest struggle was for bronze. The Israeli Reuven Hillel beat Greek Alexandros Kalpogianakis by just one point. But then you go and bring the sun. You turn my heart around. Now I'm feeling, feeling, feeling. Uh, I לא ידעתי שאני אנצח, וזהו, מרגיש לי טוב, זהו, היה לי חמישה ימים מאוד קשים, היום האחרון היה לי מאוד קשה, צפוף, ובסוף הצלחתי. The RSX class would like to thank St. Petersburg Yacht Club, its sponsors, the officials and volunteers for organising such a successful and professionally run Youth World Championship.